Switch and then turn on the dining room light. Am I muted? I can hear you. I can hear you. You can hear me? Robin, can hear me? Can hear you. Robin, can they hear us? I don't think they can hear us yet. Okay. Oh, so, all right. I'm on the train. I can, I can hear faintly. I can hear a couple of people. Has the meeting okay. not started? Uh, no, the meeting is late. Um, there was another meeting in here before us. Irene, can you hear me? I yes, just barely. So there was another meeting. Mm I think I've got one that's live. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. I don't know. Sure. Oh, thank you. So uh, do do we need to share this one? No, if we have it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these don't have a beep or anything to let us know they're on. Is this on? It is on. Yes. Okay, thank you. This is not an accessible microphone. No. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay, here's one that might be working. Let's try this. Yeah, this one is. If we just not put happy. enough of them out here, maybe. Yeah, we can share them. That's just right. line them up, turn them on, and hope for the best, huh? Did you? Do? Uh, Hey. It is. Okay, uh, ladies, are we ready to start? Okay, all right. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Everybody in Zoom world, can you hear me? Okay, yes. well, I'm just going to hope that you can hear me. Um, <laughs> by faith, I'm going to believe you. My microphone is supposedly on, so we'll just see how this really comes out in the recording. So our meeting will, is called to order, the Community Advisory Committee meeting for October. We're um, running a little bit late because of a back-to-back -back meeting. So I'm gonna make things really quick. Uh, one thing I always like to say is to subscribe to the Skagit Transit YouTube channel, hit the like button. That helps the, um, the uh, algorithms on that. And also for the CEC board meetings, uh, go ahead, and do like and subscribe to those. Virtual meeting attendees, please mute to minimize background noise unless you're speaking. So having said all that, um, I so Cheryl, would you like me to do the role while you look at the participant people coming in? Would that help you? Um, sure. Do you want to look at Sure, she, I can do the role if you'd like. And then you can... Uh, Oh, you can't read. I'm sorry. That's okay. It would, that's okay. So, but I've got it. I've got it right here. You got so, it. Uh, right. so that way you could look at the participant list. Would that help? Like, see who's all coming in. All right. So, uh, Doris, are you here? Uh, I don't know who's on that. We don't. She's not on screen. Okay. And Ray is here. Uh, Bj. She's 
Okay, well, uh, She's there. okay, BJ is here. Thank you. Louise and Craig are excused this time. Robin? Here. She was there. Yeah, Robin's here. Robin's here. here. Okay, Madeline? Yes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Manette, I heard Manette. Uh, Manette is here. Yay. Uh, Dick? Here. And I saw him. Irene, I heard Irene. I'm uh, here. Valerie is excused. Uh, and David is here. And then, of course, Cheryl and Stevie. There goes the roll call. Now, do we have any introduction of guests? Do we have any online guests? You didn't say you were. You didn't talk. Oh, I didn't talk. Fine, I just skipped right over okay. us. So, Chris and Judy are here. Okay. And John, and John is here. Wow. I didn't. I. You know what I did is I checked people off. And, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, you guys. All right. So do we have any guests? And I don't hear any from Zoom World or any in here. Uh, do we have any public commenters this time? Okay. Hearing no public commenters either here or in Zoom world. Let's go to the uh, September meeting minutes. Um, we had a revision in the minutes that everybody has been sent and that Cheryl sent out to us. Uh, does anybody have any additions or corrections to the September meeting minutes revised? I move they be approved. I second. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded that the September. Yeah, I, I have it. Thank you. It's okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Oh, same sign. All right, very good. Next, I have a CEO update section. Do we have a CEO update today? Yesterday we had, oh, sorry, I forgot that, forgot that you guys couldn't hear me. Um, yesterday we had an event at MOA2 to celebrate the completion of phase one of our new facility. Um, Ms. Judy was invited, but she was not able to make it, unfortunately. We had um, a lot of members from the community there to include our guest speaker, um, Rick, Representative Rick Larson was there. We, I did a presentation. Um, we had a screen that did a flat, um, a rendering, a visual, a video rendering rather, of our interior of the building, what it's going to look like when it's done. And then we took a tour of the inside of the building. Um, I think it was a great event. The day was absolutely beautiful. And the goal, of course, is to get more money for our new building. Um, we do have, we submitted a consolidated grant request last month, I believe it was, for $9 million. And we are going to submit one for the raise grant and the bus and bu another one for the bus and bus facilities grant. Those are both federal grants. I believe those are due in November and the awards for all three of those will come out in May or June. So we'll know hopefully in a couple of months or beginning of next year whether or not we have enough money to finish the completion of our building. Um, in terms of the Climate Commitment Act, unfortunately, I don't have an update. We have... Um, I'm trying to give you that if you wanted to read anything off of it, but it's taking forever. Well, I've seen commercials for both in op opposition of 2117 and for 2117 passing. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know yet how that's going to go, but just a reminder that if 2117 does pass, that that will be very impactful for Skagit Transit. We will lose approximately, I think it's $2.8 million. $2.1 per year. $12.6 million over the next six years. And that and it's yeah proposition 2117 that's um trying to repeal the climate commitment act and you said over the next how many years uh we would lose that much over the next how many years did you say 12.6 million dollars over the next six years six years okay 
Wow. Yeah. I know that I've been putting the word out where I can, like, you know, while it looks good to pass, this is what the impact is going to be. Um, and so thanks for those exact figures on that. So, of course, we can't tell people to which way to vote on the initiative. All we can do is educate and talk about the impacts to Skagit Transit if that were initi initiative were to pass. If 2117 passes, then it repeals the Climate Commitment Act, and then um, Skagit Transit will lose um, millions of dollars in funding. I can't tell you. I can't say. Yes, and then there goes the youth ride program too, correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah. So, so if it passes, again, Skagit Transit would stand to lose the uh, $12.6 million over the next six years, and that would affect the youth rider program that we have Going it could now. potentially impact all of our services. All of the services. There is a very handy, um, just brief little press release that we put. It's on the main page of our website. It gives you all of these facts and figures. You'll have the dollar amounts. It does break down you know, exactly what would be impacted. The free rides for youth. It impacts paratransit services, our future zero emissions fleet, uh, that transition program, the infrastructure behind it, uh, a lot to do with our long range plan and how we implement things, the different aspects that we want to bring in, like our evening and weekend service um, and any other budget gap issues. The climate could be for the weekend. That would impact all of Washington State, correct? Yeah. The, the wording will say either repeal or maintain. So you have to decide with those words. Okay, so that's up there on that main website. A and again, if this if this passes, then that's going to be harmful to Skagit Transit, is to summarize it in one sentence. Um, okay, any is is there anything else in your presentation, Ms. Crystal? I didn't actually have a presentation. I didn't realize I was going to be asked to give. Well, no, well, presentation. I mean, like, I didn't want to interrupt anything you had to say for us because we appreciate you being here very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I didn't prepare anything else. I just wanted to give an update on the, um, the phase one completion. We're mm -hmm. really excited about that. And I'll make sure that I'm better prepared to next, next month. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we needed to hear. And I appreciate you very much for taking your time to come and just drop us in. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. We are. There's actually three phases. So phase um, phase two, if I remember remember correctly, is seventeen million dollars. Phase three is thirteen million dollars. About $29 million. We have about $10 million, $10.4 million set aside. So right now we have a funding gap of approximately $19 million just for phases two and three. And like Stevie said, I'm going to be spending the rest of the week with staff finishing the budget for 2025. Um, most of you already know that we were forced to do some layoffs this year just because um, we're, we're spending more than we're bringing in. And... Um, We've lost a couple of positions, just voluntary um, separations that we that we at this point are likely not going to fill, just to see what it, just to make sure that uh, what happened, just to see what happens with CCA and to see to make sure that we're um, financially sound. And then, um, that's too bad because I'm Brad was here talking about uh,
So right now, right now, operations hasn't been directly impacted. So no bus service has been impacted. It's just been administrative positions that have been cut. Um, I will say this publicly. I've said this many times before. If if we lose the CCA money, we will definitely have another round of layoffs, and it could potentially impact service. This could have a direct impact on service. So we'll get through the budget process over the course of the next couple of days, and then um, hopefully by Friday, I'll have a, a better understanding of what our finances look like for 2025. We do have a board retreat uh, scheduled for, I believe it's October 22nd, where we're going to go over um, a couple of things with our board. We'll go over the budget, obviously, with them. I've asked my grant manager to do a grants presentation because I want the board to understand what revenues we have coming in from grants every year or every biannual biennium and um stevie's going to do a presentation on the long-range transit plan great job on the one earlier by the way you did a great job on that uh, like saturday stuff is going to be uh um starting earlier or do you know or in terms or, of service changes yeah well not service change but time or well like the service time, the buses time wise so the, the bus is at eight o'clock. They start at eight now. Are they going to make it uh, earlier or, or just leave it? Or I'll, it? I'll let Stevie talk specifically about the long range. Yeah. And actually, yeah, and that's have, coming up. If you haven't, if you haven't taken the survey, yet, I encourage you to do that. But a lot of the feedback that we have been getting from the community is that they want expanded service, whether it be earlier or later, better weekend service. But I'll, I'll let Stevie talk about the long range transit plan. That's the survey. Okay, and this, of course, uh, rolls us uh, right into the. I don't have that right there. That ro that rolls us right into the ridership report coming up. Here on the screen, uh, last month we had thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and fifty trips on fixed route, um, just slightly more than we were seeing in September of twenty-three, about two percent, so pretty pretty equal with what we were seeing out there last year. Um, but we are seeing uh, an increase on paratransit about 6% more year over year with 5,572 trips. And our estimate, our uh, percentage of youth ride free is still open steady around 15% of our population. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant on the on the youth ridership. Okay. So how gotcha. does that look compared to pre-COVID? So things get... um, in terms of fixed route ridership, it is about it's less than that now. It's about thirty. So it's it's part of group than where we were. So we're slowly getting it back. Um, but kind of what you're seeing with these numbers is we're starting to plateau. So until we start to make some improvements in the service itself, making that more appealing, we may not continue to have this upward tick of just gradual riders returning to the system. We have to do something to entice them. Uh, that's kind of when we're seeing these like single digit increases in that's our paratransit trips. And that's This side of the board. The red ones? Yeah. Okay, so red is 2022. And blue is 2022. Oh. Yeah, they don't have those. Yeah, I do have any idea how, what percentage of ridership is in universe that are pretty regular. It's a lot less than it used to be. So you have to break it out by route. Most of our rides right now are taking place between 10 and 3, which is the opposite of what the pre COVID world was, right? You're, so you're traveling for week. Right. So most people are traveling in the middle of the day uh, for whatever purposes, but it is not that high ridership in the morning and then in the evening with a bowl in the a little lower. It's a lot lower. Yeah, there are a lot more folks that are working at all. We're not working at all. We're not working at all, yeah. 
how much is not traffic? <laughs> we'll assume what they're doing. Um, but yeah, we're still further behind on paratransit than we are on fixed route ridership. But we do have a lot of folks that use you know, both services, so that's uh, very helpful. Doris? Okay, thank you. Welcome, Doris. I have to be better. Sorry. There we go. So then, the paratransit has Paratransit was still about what eighteen percent down, eighteen or nineteen percent. Yeah, it's better than fixed route. Trying to think off hand, uh, that gap is narrowing more so than this. This is kind of a plateau. Uh, I think there's just more of a need for paratransit, so those numbers will continue to to grow. We are hindered by our ability to provide more service. We only have you know, so many vehicles, drivers. Uh, I know there's a constant demand for that service, so I have a lot of thinking about how to you know, best provide that. Okay, any more questions on this, on the ridership? If not, let's go into the long-range plan. You guys have heard me talk about the long range plan quite a bit last month. We talked about initial recommendations, what they were showing us. Um, before I talk a little bit more about that, I wanted to plug the events that we have going on uh, over the next month. So, the next one up this weekend will be the Ann Forest Farmers Market, talking to folks in the community about you know, what they're buying, what they're looking for. And we also have uh, next week, around this time, we're having a virtual open house invites to come to them, um, for an opportunity at noon and again at 6 p.m. in the evening. So what I want to get the schedule better so that you can see all the ideas that the uh, consultants are proposing and really have a more engaging conversation with the snippets that you and there is a QR code, there will be links as well to the second round of the survey. So we're asking uh, it's different questions than the first one that we can ask. This is more like, here's what you told us, did we understand you correctly? Did we miss something, right? Maybe we didn't talk to you the first time. Tell us that, we have a problem. Um, so some of the things I really just wanted to highlight for you that we were talking about are the largest demands that we're seeing come out of the survey, come out of uh, the engagement events overall. People are looking for improved conditions for safety and comfort at stations and stops. We think it would be really beneficial to our service to change the one way circular loops into more straightforward back and forth uh, routes, stops on both sides of the street. We're trying to come up with service that better coordinates with the schedule of the ferry and other transit agencies that we line up with. Because um, here, the biggest demand is the connection with communities beyond our county. And not just beyond our county, but in the county as well, trying to get into new communities with conversations going on with the other statute reservation, um, trying to go back up into job for conversations like that. And as you've heard a little bit about before, we are moving forward with making, trying to make our micro transit dreams come true. Um, we put in four grants to go along with this for all of Godalco Island. So the graphic I have up here to show you just highlight the island itself overall. So it shows that would be the service area for what our micro transit service cover. And it shows you how much more area of that community people would have service in because right now 410 only goes along the east and the north of the island and then the 409 is just around the downtown area. Everything else on the island, the center and the south also have coverage and that would let us commingle uh, paratransit trips where folks currently don't have service at all and 
give people another opportunity where they don't have to express themselves. So we bring them together in more type of service. Anybody can ask a question as well? We go up to the edge of the court's property. They were doing some construction. Yeah, so we didn't have the ability to go in there and around while they were doing this construction up there. Uh, but they do want us to come back and talk a little bit about how they cover it. And then I also have a question. Um, when you're talking about commingling paratransit and the microtransit, uh, is Skagit Transit going to have enough drivers to be able to handle that? So, if you model drivers going to do this, it's probably going to turn a key operation. Contract out service uh -huh. for this uh, particular project. So, it would be outside of the agency. So, that would actually free up potentially three drivers uh, to be more available in the rest of our paratransit zones. So it would be a win-win. And if this is a beneficial model, then we know that we can find the funding to make it a full-time opportunity for the agency, acquire those vehicles, hire more drivers, but have the time to do so. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, I, I was trying to think if I did. I, I was wondering, you know, my concern, of course, would be is if, if there were going to be enough driver staff to be able to handle that. And if, uh, and of course, in contracting with another uh, system to be able to handle that, that is not going to uh, take away from service from any existing drivers, correct? Correct. Yeah, I just wanted to make that clear, too. Um, and the company that we're talking to is nationally known. They are probably the largest provider across the country. Uh, they operate in King County right now, so they're going to their services uh, Well, yeah. Um, and, I, and I've heard of providers who are doing King County. There, there's different ones, so, yeah. Uh, this is Thea, so they have had a different opportunity, but we tell them what we want, what side of vehicle, what type of vehicle. Uh -huh. uh, they'll all be ADA accessible, every single one of them. Uh, so we have multiple people in the vehicle. It won't just be, sometimes we see people in the van where you only get mm -hmm. people in the back seat. No. <laughs> Right. Uh, then we think it would be more beneficial to have just a handful of vehicles going to the trips because people seem to have similar destinations. Mm -hmm. Sure. Day, you know, bring them, you know, to the grocery store or over to the pool. That's a good place to That sounds just very much like, like uh, adding on inserts, uh, you know, the way that, that can happen in some paratransit operations uh, you know i've been in situations where inserts will be plugged in as they can do it into a paratransit so it sounds like it would be something very similar yeah. correct yeah. okay the model would still exist yeah go to all the places you need a subscription that will still mm -hmm. exist and for people that want to do something in between those existing time there's Seats available. Yep. Now, That's they it. Pick up their phone and say, hey, I went to the house. First, we can go over. Mm -hmm. They got me there in 20 minutes. Okay, and then the last really quick question is that this, uh, the uh, call on demand would be run through the Skagit Transit customer service. Is that correct? Or would this, ah, we don't know about that yet. Okay. More to come. More to come. Proposals, Dave. Gotcha. And working on. Okay. Yeah, I will have some more details about that. All right. Okay. Yeah, are there any other questions um, for Stevie well, on this? Well, Judy, I can hear you very All well, right. but when she um, speaks or other people speak, it's echoing. Okay, so then I have event participation as event next. Event participation is not going to be available. 
I wanted to make sure we had this photo here showing what uh, went on yesterday. Since we've already had our plug for MOA2 uh, phase one completion, here's all our speakers yesterday. Uh, yes, and I'm having trouble with. I'm having trouble with echoing too, and sometimes it's hard to tell what you're saying. I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. Um, so we've had a number of events that we've been at. One of them is El Grito. That is the um, celebration of Mexican independence. And this happened at uh, the square in Mount Vernon. Um, the Mexican consulate came and spoke to everyone, and um, we were there um, just kind of giving people uh, an understanding of where they could ride transit. Um, people did come to the event via transit, which was great. Um, the second one is um, the city of Cedro Woolley is uh, reaching out to residents of Cedar Woolley about housing and looking at the urban growth area um, and the impacts uh, in the future. So uh, we were there, Skagit Transit and housing, we kind of go together uh, looking at the future. Um, so um, yeah, we met a lot of people that night. And then uh, the disaster preparedness event was up in concrete that was outside and um, we were with the likes of the uh, National Guard and um, the Red Cross and so forth. Um, just making people aware that we are kind of like the mail service. We, we service the area no matter what. Um, and that is an area where flooding can be a challenge. And Mount Baker is very close, so um, they think of Mount St. Helens sometimes. I, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, it was discussed. Yeah, knock on wood. Uh, and then the last one is the B-Town Fall Festival. Um, Sketch of Transit was there. This is a very much a, a children and family sort of event. Um, we weren't too far from the zucchini car building, vegetable building cars, <laughs> where kids would build cars out of pumpkins and zucchinis, and then they would race them down a little track. And so <laughs> always, always entertaining. I, I have to say, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the zucchinis or the pumpkins faster? Um, well, um, <laughs> there weren't any prizes, so I can't say so sure. Everyone was a winner. They got to take their zucchini and pumpkin car home with them. So that's kind of what the last. Uh... Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for reporting on that. All right. So we had the week without driving and um, reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I, I think you're all aware of it. Um, information was at um, all of our areas. It was uh, through social media, the website. It was at the events that we were at. Um, I made note on here, uh, there was a Washington State Department of Transportation um, session, and they broadcasted it at that session, and everyone who attended that came by an alternate method of transportation that day, including me. <laughs> I arrived on the 208. <laughs> um, so um, we did have the two ride-alongs, and thank you to all of you who helped with those, making those happen. And I'd love for you to share uh, any highlights of your ride-alongs. Um, okay, so Ray, you were on, you were one of, you and Dave were Yeah, one Dave of, and I okay. rode the, it was the Chuckanut. Uh, 101. Yeah, the 101. 
and uh, nobody showed up. But in the spirit of riding and not driving, we decided to just take the whole route. So I went up because I haven't been on several routes. And uh, we rode the whole route. Yeah, I hadn't been yeah, on that one absolutely before. Was. Dave, of course, knew the driver. He knows all of them. I did. I <laughs> chatted with several of them. I see. I knew Larry drove the, uh, the Cedarwood bus, so I saw him. But the one that drove us around with Robbie. Uh, yeah. It was very uh, nice. I, I haven't rode that route before. Yeah, it was interesting. He, I mean, he was chatting with us, told us about his broken ankle and his how he <laughs> likes to do snowboarding. And But I wanted to take the whole route instead of transferring at the bridge like we were supposed to do because that was just a new route for me. And so we rode that. I mean, unfortunately, there wasn't anyone there to ride with us, but so, it was still And when I'm planning the next one for us to go ride on anyway. That was, that was great for me to, to go out and do that. <laughs> Yeah, it really was. It, it, it went a lot of places. I didn't know where it was going to go. But um, time-wise, it, it's uh, depending on what bus you ride. If you um, catch like the, um, I ride the 204, so I got to catch it like at 26 after at my, where my stop. Now I've got to go to the station and ride the three or uh, two away to the parking lot. Um, so that's the 15 after two away. You get to the parking lot in Burlington. You got a half hour to wait for the 101, unless you catch the um, 45 bus, and then it, that, you're 25 minute bay way. That's the only part that kind of thinks about. The so one you one. more frequent service than a long wait. Well, yeah, on that one, it's just, I don't know how you fit that. It's just not, if you catch the 15, then you're going to wait a half hour. If you catch the 45, you only wait five minutes for it. So it just depends on what bus you want to ride. So that would help people on their website, you know, make a note. 815 bus don't match up with the 101. 845 matches up. Better connection. Better connection. Maybe that might be good on the website to help people. Because it has like a half hour. And a little app. Well, when I, went, I rode out to Walgreens, and then uh, the other bus leaves in five minutes, but Walgreens isn't that fast. So I had about an hour and a half till the next bus. And that's when I tried to chase one through town. You can't catch a bus. Uh, not when you're running. So, yeah. So, no. <laughs> bus chaser. No. I decided to go somewhere else and mess around for a while until it caught me. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. All right. So, did we have uh, anybody on the other two ride alongs? Yeah. Um, Robin and Monette and were on the ride alongs. So, went. So, um, Robin, uh, if if you can hear me, um, yes, I can did, hear you. Did you ride with Manette on the ride along? Yes, yes, we both went. First, we, we we're not able to hear you, Robin. Oh, can you um, hear me? I can hear you um, on your on your computer. You press that? Alt A. Uh, the key. It's just coming out of. Oh, this. can you hear Manette? Yes, I can. Okay. We're having what technical happened? issues here. Yes. What happened was we caught the bus in Burlington. I brought my car and parked it at the old Canton restaurant parking lot, which is now public parking. So we walked the way and caught a bus. And we got Stand on by. and stayed on it. All the way until it came hey, back to oh, Berkeley. We got you. And we talked to a nice young woman who said she really enjoyed riding the bus and another lady who it depended on the bus. The only negative thing we got was the young woman said that some drivers have been disrespectful to wheelchair riders. But other than that, she was very positive. Did you hear that? Yes, we did. Uh, we 
so yeah so for those of you out in zoom world if you have tried to say something uh i apologize we we didn't have the correct connector plugged in or something like that but we, we can hear you now i think manette we got half of your uh what you said uh when we us together robin and i we met a nice young woman who really enjoys riding the bus and takes it everywhere. And another nice lady who in, depends on the bus. She has two canes. We had positive feedback from both of them, except the young woman told us that she has, has witnessed some drivers being disrespectful to wheelchair riders. Other than that, it was all positive. Okay. And well, I appreciate you reporting in and I appreciate you being patient with our connections here. Um, yeah. And so Robin, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Very good. Do you have anything to add? Uh, actually, uh, I just uh, wanted to report that we did mention because we asked the two ladies whether they were available for the ride-along experience and then explained to them that it was the National Week Without Driving that we were there partly to just improve people's awareness of the buses and the services and uh, so forth. So uh, they were very responsive to that, except that they both had specific uh, places for their destinations. And um, so they were both very sweet. And uh, we did enjoy the whole trip. I saw parts of South Mount Vernon that I haven't been in for a long time. And then uh, what comes back to me though, in connection with this, and it may be a round table, um, item, but I would like to see that space just behind the driver that almost faces directly toward the door on each bus and sometimes has tape marks on it. When you add a route or you make a different uh, uh, destination, whatever changes in the routes that you are going to do, if you would just post and notice right on that surface. It's very large and almost impossible for someone boarding the bus to miss. Uh, give the information, this bus travels routes uh, 300 and 301 alternately, for example, or okay. whatever it does. Wow, that that's a that's a great report on these, and I I love the way you advertise the uh, the week without driving challenge that way. Got a couple takers. That was excellent. So uh, Stevie, uh, do you are you do you know what Robin is talking about when she's talking about the space behind the driver where there is some vertical space to put notices? Because I think I, I think Doris has mentioned some things about that in the past about having some notices that we can read, making sure and taking service changes, right? And we have a train coming through. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, so if I'm not mistaken, I, we've talked about trying to post uh, readable uh, service changes when, when they happen and readable notices. And some of these have been actually uh, on some of the screens where they need to have larger print and need to be shown more than just a few seconds at a time. And of course, I am not aware of those, but we have had that reported as well. So I think we're talking about print notices in the space behind the driver, plus some improvements possibly in some of the electronic notices too. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, does anybody have anything to add? Okay, if not, 
Uh, the next um, thing we have coming up is about our elections. And as since this is October, uh, nominations are officially open. And again, the way we do this is anyone who wants to nominate someone for the chair, the vice chair, or the special projects uh, coordinator, uh, let Cheryl know who you nominate and for which office. Uh, we're gonna, I think the thing is, uh, we're going to just have it open, and we will have uh, everybody turn in their nomination to Cheryl, and that will give people also who are not at the meeting time to be able to hand in their nominations as well. Um, and so this allows people also on Zoom to uh, be able to turn in, turn in nominations and people who are not not here so Judy could I ask one thing yes um you know how we ask people to turn in their agenda items by the Monday or Tuesday the first Monday yeah if we could have nominations then too then I can have it prepared for the agenda okay say that again the train's got a little louder <laughs> sorry <laughs> yes the nomination names can be sent to me by that date the first Monday the of the first month. Monday of the month. <laughs> well, uh, after well, we're done, you can give it to me. This is this is the public meeting. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, what you would like, just some summarizing this, is the same day that we turn in agenda items, which is now the first Monday of the month, which uh, Chris Jones says is November the fourth. Uh, at the same time, turn, also turn in your nominations. So then in our November meeting, uh, we will actually, uh, Cheryl will list the nominations. We will actually vote in November. So now nominations are officially open. Uh, turn in, you have one month to be able, almost one month, three weeks, <laughs> to be able to, tur to uh, turn those into Cheryl by November the 4th. Uh, well, we're not going to handle them during the meeting, but yeah, we're, we are not nominating during this meeting, but just after, oh, well, sure. I mean, if you talk to her after the meeting, yeah, I, I guess is it, <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be up to what you and Cheryl can do with that. Okay. Okay. Any questions on the nominations? You can you can either call or send by email. And uh, Cheryl, would you give your number, please? 360-757-5194. Okay. Very good. Did everybody get that in Zoomville? 757-357-5194. Five one nine four. That is Cheryl's number for nominations and also again for agenda items to be turned in November the fourth. Email. It's C Willis at skagittransit.org. And um, I will also I can also send out a notice to everybody uh, who has email as well. Oh, sure. Uh, I'll be sending out to everybody who's on email. Okay, any other questions on elections? All right, uh, moving on, uh, we've got a section called committee reports. And I guess uh, under that, we have the uh, connector committee. Does anybody have anything to report on any uh, connections you've taken, any issues? Uh, or praises, anything like that? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to the round table. Uh, and I was gonna ask about the ride-alongs in here, but we covered those. That was really good for the uh, week without driving challenge. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention really quickly, and I sent out an email about this, is that 
I have started a Facebook Skagit Valley non-driver group. And this is, uh, I basically got it started because I was interested in trying to um, get some, hopefully, grassroots ridership who take Skagit Transit or any of the buses in this area to be able to join and come up with ideas and maybe help connect them differently with Skagit Transit. But this group is independent of Skagit Transit, but we, we will see how it goes on that. Um, and then I wanted to, there was another section I was almost going to skip here on some of the uh, rider uh, on these guidelines that have come out. Um, did, did anyone want to report on those? Uh, what guidelines are you referring to? What guidelines? Uh, I uh, read the guidelines and signed them before you started your. Uh, oh, the the uh, volunteer the guidelines. Here, correct. It's a section guide? on the agenda, so I was wondering who. You know, not knowing exactly what you were wanting to do with this, if this is something Stevie were going to talk about or Cheryl, it just it just shows it on the agenda, and I wasn't sure what this had to do with, so I wanted to make sure and open it up. Okay. I got yours, Dave. Hi, hi. Can I say something? Yes, Doris. Can you hear me? Hi there. I'm sorry. Um, I'm in Seattle, and I was listening on the phone, but I couldn't seem to get through. And then, um, but I finally got on to the thing. I just wanted to say, um, that I, I know this isn't the topic anymore, but I did ride the bus and the light rail to Seattle on the ride without ride without riding driving week and I rode my bus around Seattle for three days and I had a great time. Hey great. Well we, we and, can and I, I know it's the end of the meeting but um so maybe we can put my idea my or my question about emergency services if the freeway is closed on the agenda for next month. I think that would be good. I think that would be a good idea because there is going to be some carryover. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay, Dave's question: what it, what it costs to ride the? You're talking which bus? He rode the Seattle bus. Well, the Seattle bus. Dave wondered what the cost was on the Seattle bus. Yeah, can you tell us what that cost is, Doris? Yeah, it's a dollar for seniors. Oh. I can't. <laughs> okay. It's really expensive well, they, to get an orca. You should, if you're going to go into King County or Snohomish County, go get an orca card. And then as a senior, you just load money on your orca card and it's a dollar when you tap the bus. I wow. think it's a dollar when you go on the light rail also. But um, I think it's $3 to ride the light rail now in Seattle. And it's two. Yeah, I'm not sure about the bus. I think it's two twenty two and a quarter or something. Um, but if you get a Orca card, you can transfer, and you know you only pay once for your whole trip if you go from bus to light rail. It costs five bucks to get an Orca card, and nothing to get an Orca card if you sign up at a senior center. Or we should figure out a way, I think, to help to articulate for people to get Orca cards through Skagit Transit or just make sure that we have on the website how people can apply by mail and get an orca card or by the or go on the website and order an orca card those are good ideas um yeah so one of the things on the week without driving challenge is that um they 
the people who have taken part in these, uh, the challenge is sponsored through America Walks. And it started out as a Washington thing, but it went national. But Washington, I mean, uh, the state of Washington, plus the We Walks National, they are looking for ridership stories who've done the ridership challenge. Mm. So anybody who would like to turn in what, what your experience it was, what you did, uh, I, w- I can send you out the email address to a lady here, and she's the Director of Transportation for Disability Rights of Washington, a Cecilia mm-hmm. Black, and she's looking for stories, experiences. So now that we mm-hmm. have finished, I will send her email, her contact information out where you can send her mm-hmm. what your stories are. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll, I'll send in some info. Okay, I will get that out to you guys. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, it is, we started late and it looks like we're going to be adjourning late a little bit. Is there anything that needs to come up now in October before we, before we try to adjourn? Okay. And that, in that vein, would anybody like to bring a forward a motion for adjourning? I move to adjourn. Okay. Okay. Okay, (laughs) it has been moved and seconded by several that the meeting be adjourned with no further business. All in favor, say aye. Okay, same sign. Aye. Oh, okay. (laughs) We have an aye. Okay, nobody's opposed. Nope. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody in Zoom, Zoomville, thank you for your patience with us today. Yes, thank you, Judy.